we have a common understanding of commons. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think they're complementary, for sure. Yeah. I'll let, Hito, I'll let you go first. Um, well, to a certain degree, yes, in that we both posit a sort of materially entangled commons, which not only consists of humans, but also other entities, including materials. And I think that we also think that there is a shared responsibility for this realm. Now, we may diverge maybe in ideas on how to manage it or how to handle it, the, um, the role of technology in it partly, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, possibly. I, I think the, the, key, the key idea I would want to focus on is not so much the technology itself, mm -hmm. um, but rather how it is that a society which is really inevitably, you know, at least urban scale, if not actually really planetary scale, um, is able to make sense of itself, is able to is able to sense itself and to make sense of itself, to produce not one giant master model of itself, but multiple models of itself. And more importantly, that these models would have the ability to recursively act back upon um, that world. Th this is this is a form of, of collective intelligence. The technology is is simply a medium. I, I suppose for me, the kind of the 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 example here of models that need to be more recursive is that of again that of climate science. The I would I would say that in many ways the very idea of climate change um, is an accomplishment of planetary scale computation. Without all the sensors and simulations and calculations, the very idea of climate change wouldn't be wouldn't be clear. The problem is that we, as the RPCC reports we just saw a couple of days ago, we have very clear idea of what's happening and what's going to happen. What, what these models don't have is the ability to actually affect the future. And this ability for models to actually become a medium of collective intelligence is, I think, what they're for. Unfortunately, they're being used, as I think we both agree, for much more trivial and, and sometimes quite pernicious ends. Well, we had a great example of that previously when there was this sort of Soviet-style corporate propaganda emanating from the Airbnb representative, which is positively one of the data collecting entities, which is definitely not part of the solution, but the problem or one of the problems, I'm saying this as a person that resides in Berlin and really has seen over quite a period of time how this type of operation is disrupting neighborhoods in a very negative way. So I think that this kind of data collecting and extracting operations is maybe also one of the reasons why, of course, there's a lot of people that are very worried about this type of of uh, activity, which also borders surveillance. Now, I completely agree with your analysis that um, restricting the criticism of surveillance on one's own data as private property may not be going far enough. I completely agree with um, that. But having said that, we also need some kind of um, of protection, no, against um, invasive operations of collecting data and privatizing them. Because I don't know, I mean, you probably remembered the first model I showed, and I said that the metrics of libertarian, individual, rational self-interest is harmful to the commons, but many of the big data um, uh, corporations are acting exactly in this way as yes. if they were these kind of sociopath entities which are not interested, of mm -hmm. course, in maintaining or managing a commons in a rational way for everyone, but uh, free riding on it, in fact. Uh, yes, I, I really agree with I think most of everything that you're, that you're suggesting here. I, I think maybe the, the key point is not only is the ways in which I mean, the argument is suggesting is the ways in which we've been using um, the tremendous capacity for societal, uh, you know, making sense of ourselves and modeling ourselves one way or another has been, you know, misused and continues to be misused 
not only in a you know on a, on a world historical level and and maybe the primary uh, the crux of this, which I, I I mentioned in my talk, and I think we agree with, we're, we're getting is this kind of over individuation of the sense of society. The idea that society is just an accumulation of these atomized uh, libertarian monads bouncing off of each other uh, is is a broken model of the social, which is also why I, I and I think we may agree in some extent some of the critiques of, of surveillance capitalism that come to the come to the conclusion that the that the remedy to all of this is to kind of counter weaponize the individual against this against the collective so that it might be further privatized um, is, is 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 kind of missing the forest for the missing the forest for the trees um, and may actually be uh, uh, pushing us even further in the wrong direction to some extent though I, I agree with almost all of the critiques of the of the of the status quo but the I, I think you also raise a point here that might be interesting and, and that is all of the ways in which these kinds of tools and platforms and challenges are being misused is also preventing them from being used in the way that we need that is it's not just a matter of taking back our data uh, we, we're producing the wrong data. The data that Facebook produces, the data that the social media, that Airbnb produces about what the city is and where society is, is not is the wrong data that a society needs in order to uh, properly organize and properly organize itself. Um, and so, the question of what is the data that we need? How do we produce it? How is it administered? How can it be used in ways that are equitable and productive? These these remain the key political questions, um, as well as technological ones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm really sorry I got stuck in these burden public education problems, which really start with not being able to access the internet, because what I would have liked to talk about would be a communist data uh, infrastructure. How can this be managed? How can this be even imagined using, you know, uh, insights that uh, other scientists had already about the commons. Um, mm -hmm. How, how, yeah, what, what data to produce? Who, who, um, the, the, who owns them? The question of ownership of data, the question of management of data, and the question of making them commons is, I think, one of the main uh, questions facing us today. And I would really hope, like to hope, that uh, the city of Berlin takes some interest in this going forward. I, I, I very much agree. Um, I, you know, what two things to sort of come to mind. One is, that, is I, I keep coming back in my own work to earth sciences and climate sciences as a model for another way in which all of this could work, another model for how planetary scale computation could be uh, could be organized. Uh, it's one in which data is obviously much more is is held uh, in a kind of scientific commons. It is much more transparent. It's used. The same piece of data might be used for multiple models. There are models that are audited, and so forth and so on. It, it's 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 not hypothetical that there could be other uses for these capacities. We just it just. Uh, it's it's a shift in the data that needs to be produced, and I think you're right. A lot of it does have to be have to do with which, what are the large age, positions of agency, a city governance, a state governance, or like, that are actually able to mobilize the production and organization of this data at at a similar at a similar kind of scale. Um, I, I think going forward, to some extent, the question of that 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 the 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 use of quantitative models. Uh, the use of, of, of so forth. So it's not just something that governments will do. Um, in, in, as we saw with the pandemic um, and the production of epidemiological models that we all kind of took a look at to see how close the wolf was to the door uh, and, and what the trends are. We all became amateur epidemiologists. Uh, that this kind of modeling is also, is, is in a way, what governance is. Uh, it's how that underlying, the underlying you know, physical, biological, material reality of our existence is able to make sense of itself, and hopefully, hopefully, rationally act back upon itself. But um, we're, we we seem to be further away from that than we really should be. Thank you, thank you, Benjamin and Hito. That's all we have time for. It's been a pleasure to listen to your discussion and to hear both of your presentations. So, a warm round of applause for both it's, of you. It's, it, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.